to you by Mahabharat Kedusan Broadcast Service from American Center English Service here at the Washington DC studio. Today, we'll continue our discussion on the concepts we need to understand about sin. After the discussion, we'll have a narration on the life of Saint Arsenius on the book called The Sayings of the Desert Fathers. Now, let's go to the discussion. <laughs> Hello everyone, thank you for being with us. This program is brought to you by Mahabharak Adusan, broadcast service from American Center English Service. We are located at the Washington DC studio and today we'll be discussing uh, the, the, the discussion we started last week which was about sin and we're going to cover a lot of topics so please continue watching and as our guests, as we did last time, we have Casey's Iyo Elberta and we also have Mem Hirshimelis Merrasa. And Casey Seyo Elberta serves uh, uh, as a priest in at Debra Hilek at Dus Raguel Cathedral in Sterling, Virginia. And Memher Shemel serves at Salita Mhiret at Dist Mariam Church in Canada. So continue watching and let us learn from them. Thank you, Memher Shemel, for that. You brought a very important uh, points that we need to understand, right? Like what, who the devil is and what his intentions are. And uh, you also said that we ha have free will, right? Uh, we all have free will. We have the free will to follow God, but we can also choose not to follow God. We have the free will and we need to decide uh, we need to decide which way we're going to choose because we cannot be in the middle, right? We need to choose one or the other and fully live within that world, right? We need That's to know right. that That's and right. yeah, yeah. And you also said giving up is not an option as a Christian, right? Because as we see the martyrs, uh, the martyrdom, they did not give up, right? Until their last breath, as you said. Uh, until their last breath, we need to continue fighting for what we believe in. And we cannot give up uh, because the devil will not stop working, right? He's not going to stop tempting us or he's not going to stop uh, trying his best to lead us into a different path than God's path, right? So we should be always be aware of that and never give up and always continue for uh, what, what we what we started, right? We always remember why we started, why we are created, and always remember um, that we should never give up, regardless of what happens. And reading and listening it to our fathers, our, uh, the Kaddusan or the saints, stories is also really helpful, as you mentioned. Um, also, uh, Abba Anthony's uh, teachings, you all, you mentioned a couple of that, and his advices to us, right? And just listening to their to their to their stories, to their life, how they live their life, we uh, can reflect back onto our lives and s t tell our lives that we can go through uh, everything that we face because they went through much worse than than this, right? Um, and so we should know how to respond to to the temptations as well as you said. Thank you very much for elaborating on on, on the answer. For my next question, um, if you'd like to add on that, Casey, uh, on that previous question, you are more than welcome to. So the next question will be: uh, Now that we talked about the what sin is, how how we commit sin and how we are dragged into sin, knowing and unknowingly. I'd like to focus on the solution, right? The potential solutions and what can our church, uh, the Orthodox Auto Church do to help the youth uh, stop committing sin? And what can we do in our personal lives to help prevent ourselves from sinning and always live a righteous life and to uh, carry the cross, right? In our everyday life. 
wh how, how can we prevent ourselves and what can the church do to help the youth as well? Yeah, uh, thank you again. Uh, uh, thank you, member, for the wonderful uh, explanation again. Uh, uh, especially, I like, you know, the last part so where he said, you know, the way, one way uh, the devil tricks us is by what we call the gradual fall, right? So the gradual distraction. So we don't feel that we are being dragged away from God. So everything happens gradually, right? Uh, and all those uh, kinds of scenes that we were talking about and the ultimate goal uh, of you know, the devil is to make them addictive, right? So to make them a habit. But that doesn't happen in one night, in one day. And he doesn't want to do it that way because he wants everything to happen gradually so we don't notice it, right? Uh, otherwise, we're gonna, uh, you know, repent. Uh, if something major happens in our life, uh, we're gonna repent immediately, right? Uh, just like, you know, St. Peter. Uh, but uh, one of the great tricks of the devil, as our member was saying, is you know the gradual fall. And every one of us have to be very aware of this trick, right? So he uh, he destroys our image one bit at a time, one bit in a day, right? So after uh, you know few months or after a year, uh, if you look at you know your spiritual life or what you had you know a year before and now then you will see the big gap, but that doesn't, uh, the devil doesn't want that, happen to, that to happen in one day. And that gradual fall is, you know, something that we all should be aware of. And I, I would like to add one more point there, and especially when we talk about the devil's trick is, I think uh, one other most common trick is, uh, you know, by baiting us, right? So by giving us something that we like, uh, so that we can be trapped uh, in his uh, uh, in his tricks, right? Uh, just like uh, the way we bait uh, rodents or some animals that we don't want in our house. What do we do? Uh, we put a trap, but not only the trap, we put something that the animals like, right? A tasty food. We put it there. So the animals come there just to eat the food, but they don't know what uh, is behind the food, right? Uh, and I think the devil uses that trick very commonly. And if you look at you know, the scenes that we were discussing so far, um, so the devil puts something uh, pleasurable for the flesh, right? Uh, and that's what's driving the youth. That's what's driving us towards that scene every day. That's where the urge is coming from. Because when we commit that sin, the, immediately we get instant gratification or pleasure, right? But that's a bait, that's a bait. After we committed the sin, we all know by our own very experience, right? Uh, the outcome, the ultimate outcome of sin is not pleasure is not joy is not happiness we know the ultimate goal uh, the ultimate outcome uh, is guilt right fear um, uh, lack of peace right um, yeah, depression depression um, so we feel down that's the ultimate goal the ultimate outcome but initially what we get is a pleasure, right? So someone who is looking down uh, his room and sitting in his uh, room and watching porn or doing something very uh, uh, bad sexual things that we uh, talked earlier, uh, he will get the uh, pleasure the moment he's doing that scene, but after he committed that scene, Right? When he comes back to his senses, then he will immediately start to feel the guilt. Right? Uh, the, uh, the final outcome of sin is always, always, 
all those bad uh, feelings that we described, right? Uh, but the devil tricks us uh, by putting something uh, that lasts only for a very short time. But just because uh, we tend to enjoy that, uh, that pleasure that only lasts for a few minutes maybe, or for even, let's say for a day, but we are losing, sacrificing, sacrificing our uh, eternal life instead. Uh, uh, so we should uh, be aware of that trick as well. Uh, and I think when we come to the solutions, uh, I would like to start by saying uh, the solution should come from uh, three parties. The first one is us, and the second one is our uh, Father Confessor, and the third is our Lord Jesus Christ. So these three have to work in a communion uh, to, to complete our salvation, to purify us, to keep us from the, these uh, simple thoughts, actions. Um, and I think, you know, the, the first thing should start from us, right? Uh, so how do I keep myself clean from sin? I, it should start from me, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing I need to make a commitment. I need to say, I am not for sin. I am for my Lord Jesus Christ. I shouldn't be a slave for any kind of addiction. I shouldn't be um, under the control of anything other than God. So we should start with a bold commitment like that, right? So I should make my body a temple for uh, my Lord Jesus Christ. This is a, a temple for him, right? My heart is a temple for him. By the way, that's a temple not built by with human hands, right? That's a temple that, that God uh, loves to dwell uh, dwell in forever, forever. So my body is a temple, so I should keep it clean for him. So when we talk in the definition, we say, uh, you know, God created Adam in his image and likeness, right? There are two words there. So we have God's image, and there is a divine call, uh, for us to live in his likeness, right? In his likeness. Uh, so we should, uh, we should bear that in mind and we should keep it as a lifetime commitment. So that, it should start with that. When we are very committed on something, something, we take actions, we take actions. And I, I, I think uh, one of the reasons that we don't, take serious actions on spiritual matters is because we have a very fuzzy, vague vision of our destiny, right? We have a very vague vision of our spiritual life, but we need to sit down and clearly see, you know, where our destiny is, where our target is, where the market is, where we are now, right? And compare just like the prodigal son, that's what he did, right? So when he started the a repentant life, the first thing he, he did is in, when you read Luke chapter 15, he sat down and he came to his senses and he started comparing his life while he was in his father's house versus uh, the life that he has living among the pigs. Uh, so we should we, we should start with that. We, we should start with discovering our life where we are at. Um, what kind of uh, sinful thoughts uh, uh, do we struggle with? All right. So we should identify our uh, what we call in our this language score. Uh, so one of the tricks of the devil is he picks one scene and he repeatedly tempts us with that specific sin. 
so that he can drive us to despair very quick, right? So if I commit the same sin three times or four times or five times, then by the sixth time, I will give up. I will give up and I will say, oh, this is my, has become my second nature. I can't live without this. So that's why one of the, 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 the tricks that the devil uses is by giving us one specific score or passion or temptation and tempting us, you know, with that specific score. And we, we need to identify what that is, right? What's that same scene that I keep on falling uh, into, right? Uh, so it, all, it should all start uh, with uh, our own discovery of our own life and making a bold commitment. Then, uh, and only then, we can start a true repentant life. And the solution for sin is repentance, repentance. But uh, unfortunately, we, uh, we have a very, um, I, I would say, you know, very wrong understanding of what repentance is. Repentance is a life, a life. And there is no Christianity without repentance. Right. So if we all agree that we all commit sin, and as we mentioned in Second Corinthians chapter six, Saint Paul clearly said, uh, "There is no communion between light and darkness." And when we commit our those sins, we have already separated ourselves from God. There is no communion between Him and us because of our sins, and we we need to find. Uh, a way to resolve our sins, to wipe out our sins and reunite with our God, with our Lord, right? And the solution, if sin is separation from God and repentance is a return back to God, right? So repentance is the, the solution, but true repentance should start from the heart, right? Should start from the heart. So I should discover, I should sit down, I should examine myself clearly identify my weaknesses, identify um, the, the things that keep on dragging me into temptations or uh, sinful thoughts or sinful actions. And then after I made that uh, very clear to myself, I should come forward to God. And one of the things that we should do every day is uh, repent uh, about uh, the, the, the sinful things that we committed uh, every day in prayer. So one of the biggest portions of our prayer time should be repentance. So we should repent. We should ask the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, our passions, those very tough things, sins, uh, tough uh, temptations, we can't overcome them by our own power. We should be very clear on this, okay? Um, it's just like, you know, fighting against Goliath. We are the little David. We can't overcome unless God is fighting with us. So uh, we should always ask for his help in our prayers. Uh, we should call his name. And th that, that prayer shouldn't be limited to you know, our morning or uh, night prayers, we should continuously pray throughout the day. Whenever there is a, a temptation, you know, we mentioned earlier, we should, we should mon monitor our hearts, right? So whenever I detect something coming into my heart, I should pray immediately. I should make the sign of the cross. That's my power. That's my power. I should um, uh, try to keep that thought away from me by any means, right? So that's prayer, that's prayer. That's why St. Paul said, pray unceasingly, pray unceasingly. So we should keep on fighting, fighting with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then, and we should have a father confessor in Saha Abbat. And I, I would like to conclude by saying this, one of the biggest tricks of the devil is by making us believe that we don't need Yen Sahabat, Father Confessor, right? Uh, and that's the biggest mistake of the youth. If you are trying to lead 
a spiritual life while a youth without anybody's help, it's gonna be very difficult. One day or another, you're gonna commit very big sin and you will regret it for uh, the rest of your life. So we need to have, we need, we need to have that protection uh, through our uh, father confessor. Um, we need to have also a spiritual counselor, right? Uh, especially as a youth, uh, we are coming out of childhood we are experiencing a lot of things for the first time. There are hormonal changes, psychological changes. There, there is a lot of th things changing, changing in our body, in our mind. And uh, all these temptations, right? The sexual desires, all, all, all the access to everything, so, uh, the uh, electronic devices that we were talking about, right? All these things are, very new experiences for us, right? And we don't know how to handle them, how to properly handle them. So we need a spiritual guidance. So we can't provide a solution over uh, like a 40 minute discussion, but everybody has to have his own confession father and have a personal discussion, personal discussion about his life, his challenges, his temptations. And only then, you know, we can, uh, we, we can hear a, a very personal solution from our father confessor. By the way, it's our Lord Jesus Christ that works through uh, our uh, confession fathers, right? Uh, so he's the one who wipes out our sins. He's the one who gives us you know, spiritual wisdom. He's the one who's guiding us uh, on the right track. Uh, so they are ambassadors, right? Uh, so we need to come forward. We need everybody should have Yen uh, Sahaba. If we want to live uh, a sinless, right, uh, guilt-free, guilt-free, pure, clean uh, life, spiritual life, we need to have uh, a father confessor, and we need to start living a true repentant life. That was greatly explained, Casey. Thank you very much. You went into the detail and you told us the necessary steps that we must take, right? To live a sinless and a righteous life. You told us uh, the necessary steps. And before that, you all, you also commented on the previous previous question and you gave an example that uh, caught my attention. You said when we try to trap a mouse or something in the house, then we not only put the trap there, but we also put the something sweet, right? That will attract the the uh, that will attract them so that they can come and be trapped. And it's the same way with our lives, right? Uh, because if we saw the sin as a sin when it came, then it will be much easier for us to start a different direction, go in a different direction, right? It will be easier not to, for us not to be tempted and not let it grow in us, right? But if we, since there's something sweet that really attracts us there, then that's why we are tempted and just uh, that's what that's the reason we let it grow in ourselves and it becomes a sin and that's really important and we need to see that uh, as well and for this question as you as you mentioned a lot of great things the first thing though that the, as a solution that we need to know is it comes from within us right the repentance it has to come from us we need to be we need to be of able to to first see the good and the bad and go within the good di direction right within the life that God set for for us the life that God taught us to live in we need to be able to live uh, to live that and we need to tell ourselves enough is enough right commit our commit we need to have a commitment and we need to commit to live a righteous life and to do that uh, it's, it doesn't, even though people can tell us what, what is good, that the importance of, of, uh, of God and that we need to live a righteous life. If it doesn't come from within us, then it's not going to, we're not going to be able to repent, right? So it has to come from us. That's the first step, as you said. And then the, uh, we need to pray, right? We need to pray for that. Praying is a very essential tool 
that we must use when we try to live a righteous life, when we try to live a sinless, uh, a sinless life, because we have power. We, as you said, we all have power, but our power comes from God, from the praying that we do, right? From the praying that we pray. It comes from God's power, and through praying we can overcome a lot of things, as you also said, and through prayer uh, we need to repent, right? And we don't, it's not just during the night or in the morning that we need to pray. We need to pray every single minute, right? We need to pray for His, for repentance, for uh, asking for forgiveness. We need to do this every single uh, minute of our lives. And the more we pray, the more spiritual we become and the easier it will be for us to have a confession, Father, and to repent as well, right? Because whenever we people tell us that we should have a confession, Father, then a lot of people come up with excuses, right? They come up with uh, a lot of excuses. For example, they might say, um, but it's, it's, it's not something that I don't, I don't feel comfortable telling all the sins that I made uh, to, to someone. And they might come with other excuses as well, but committing yourself is really uh, important and knowing what we should be doing. Uh, and starting a path, a spiritual path is essential. Um, and then we got, it has to come um, uh, from us, and then we need to repent, have a confession, Father. As you said, uh, having a confession, Father, is really essential, right? They can help us in many ways. Um, and this alone, ha we will definitely have a discussion regarding repentance, uh, because it's a very important topic that is, we all need to know, right? We all need to understand well, and it's, uh, we need to have a discussion on its own uh, about this topic. And um, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for, for that great answer. I really appreciate it. And we came to the end of our discussion, but if you both want to comment or have, uh, if you have a last advice that you guys, that you both want to give, then you're more, more than welcome to. I'll start with Casey Sayer. Yeah, I would, uh, I would like to say, uh, yeah, this is a very broad, uh, uh, topic as our member was uh, saying um, and uh, uh, let's just remember that sin is not a simple thing a minor thing uh, let's always uh, bear in mind whenever we commit a sin uh, we are separating ourselves from the all loving all caring uh, God, who is a source of uh, all goodness and life, eternal life. So we should uh, we should take it seriously. Um, and I would like to conclude uh, with uh, uh, what uh, Saint John Chrysostom uh, said about uh, sin, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know where we find you know the true medicine for sin so in in the lot of uh, uh writings of the holy fathers sin is described as a disease right it's a poison right and whenever we uh, catch some disease or we, we are not feeling well what do we do we rush to hospitals right we seek for the help of physicians, right? And that's how uh, St. John Chrysostom uh, explains it. So, um, so he says, you know, the church is a hospital, not a courtroom. So we go there not to be judged, but to be healed, right? So the, the priestess, you know, the confession fathers there are the physicians the physicians and by the way whenever we commit any sin there is no other way for that sin to go away except except through the holy sacraments right so that's why we need uh, to confess our sin so our sin has to be uh, has to be wiped away and resolved through the prayer and the mystery of uh, the mystery of confession, and uh, so let's come forward to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's come forward to the church. Let's be healed, 
let's not live with guilt and let's not isolate ourselves. Isolation is not the solution. But coming forward and confessing is uh, what brings us a solution. So uh, let's always remember what uh, St. John Chrysostom said. Uh, come forward to the hospital whenever you uh, feel sick. Uh, and may uh, the Almighty God help all of us, especially the youth, uh, because, you know, as we said, there is a lot of temptation, uh, a lot of uh, things that, uh, you know, tempt us to, to commit sin. Uh, committing sin is a matter of like uh, a single click on our phones, right? So it has become very challenging and may he give us you know, the wisdom that he gave to our forefathers and may he uh, keep us safe uh, uh, from the tricks uh, of the adversary, the devil. Thank you, definitely. I mean, I mean, and it, it's also it's very true that way when we prioritize uh, God, then when we know that the church is the hospital and that through God, every anything, uh, everything is possible, right? Everything is possible. But when something bad ha happens in our life, when there's something challenging happens, some people might uh, go seek help somewhere else, right? They might fully trust in, in the in the in the doctors that we have or in the signs, right? But uh, a lot of people have have the challenge of knowing knowing that God can do everything and that whenever we're faced with a problem, then instead of going somewhere else that we believe that will fix will fix the problem, we need to go to the church, right? We need to go to the church for a solution. We need to ask God in our prayers because. He's the only one that can uh, that can fix any uh, the things that we are facing, right? The challenges that we are facing. Thank you, thank you, Casey's. Mem um, do you have any comments that you would like to tell? Well, uh, all has been said by our father. Uh, it was nicely um, uh, elaborated, especially on the point of um, the importance of uh, confession, father. And uh, as he rightly elaborated, uh, confession fathers uh, are the doctors or the physicians when it comes to our religious um, life. So as our father also elaborated, whenever someone is sick, he uh, sees a doctor, he goes to the hospital. The same is true with uh, the process of uh, the sacrament of uh, the penance. Uh, it's not because uh, someone is, uh, is sinful or is someone is sinning, but uh, it's it's a principle of uh, our religious uh, doctrine. As we all know, uh, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, uh, David, and all of them, uh, even in the old Tent uh, in the Old Testament, and uh, like Peter, John, uh, in the New Testament, uh, all this. Uh, they all uh, commit sin, and uh, even when they are, uh, when they were uh, on the uh, on the pinnacle of uh, holiness. So, accordingly, as our father has stated, the sacrament, uh, this sacrament, which is uh, instituted to, in order to, um, uh, in order for a sinner to uh, return to God after confessing his sin uh, to a priest. It's very uh, essential, very important, and um, uh, scripturally, uh, our father has also uh, rightly uh, stated that um, in the First Corinthian uh, chapter, uh, chapter eleven, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine, uh, um, it was stated that uh, let a man examine himself, and so let him uh, eat of uh, that bread and drink uh, of that cup. Uh, for he that eats and drinks uh, unworthily uh, and um, the uh, domination of himself, not uh, uh, discrediting uh, the Lord's uh, body. So it's very essential to have um, uh, a confession, Father, as uh, our Father has uh, rightly uh, uh, stated. So we have to always put this uh, in, uh, in mind. Uh, so there is also a point which is uh, a, a true and um, uh, a, a true and uh, a false uh, repentance, uh, but we have to lean always into the true repentance, uh, uh, as it is stated in Matthew uh, chapter sixteen, verse nineteen, when Christ said to Peter after uh, 
descri describing that he uh, was the son of uh, the living God. Uh, he said, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound on heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt uh, those on earth shall be uh, loosed in heaven. So this also shows uh, the importance of uh, the uh, communication that we need to have with um, uh, our uh, repenting uh, father and we need to repent and they are our doctors and that's how we could be uh, healed and repent as it is uh, also stated in the uh, in acts uh, uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 19 repent ye therefore and he converted that your sin may be uh, blotted out so this is a very important thing but as our father also stated it's a broad concept we can uh, look into you know, the concept from a uh, uh, different uh, perspective. Um, but I would like to conclude with uh, one uh, final scripture in Matthew uh, chapter 12, uh, verse uh, 31. Uh, the, uh, there is uh, a concept which says that the, um, the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Uh, we have to be aware about this point as well. Uh, the rest has been uh, well elaborated by our, by our Father. Uh, it was uh, an opportunity not only to address some of the questions, but it was also an enlightening, an enlightening moment for me uh, to get uh, some lessons from our father as well. Uh, I really want to appreciate and uh, I would like to also say it was uh, an honor to be uh, sitting beside uh, our father and get enlightened with uh, the word of God. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for the advice you gave us. We, I, uh, we all really appreciate it. And uh, as you both mentioned, repentance is essential in our Christian life, right? Because that is the way uh, and the only way that we can overcome sin, right? That we can get 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 rid of the, all the sinful acts that we previously committed. Repentance is the only way, and we should appreciate that we have repentance, right? Because sin after sin comes death right a sinful life leads to to death and now there's a way out and we should all be happy and be joyful that we have repentance and we should never uh, un, un, uh, re regard it as something less than it is because it, it's uh, even to understand it is hard because repentance is a very powerful tool but a lot of people are not using it and it's very essential to, we all need to use it to use this opportunity that was given to us so that we can live uh, start living a righteous life and thank you thank you both for coming and teaching us about this concept i personally learned a lot and i hope a lot of people also learned a lot from from the teachings uh from from both of you thank you i really appreciate it we covered a lot of topics also what is sin we covered what is sin how how people sin the types of sin that the, the, the youth and anyone also commits and we also importantly talked about the solutions right the possible solutions the steps that we need to take uh in our, in our lives to to prevent ourselves ourselves from sinning which is a very important to understand thank you again thank you very much <laughs>